It's been a very, very long time since I've been, in fact, never, and it's not a long time, but never, never ever have I been in a room with so many beautiful women all at once. So, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you uh, for, in for inviting me here for to, uh, to be a speaker and a guest here. In fact, I promised uh, Sheikh Kuntala that uh, we would do a quick presentation, but then I thought, uh, Lots of you would be bored uh, with the PowerPoint presentations, which is a very typical thing to do, which is, I'm sure most of you are all uh, business women, and so you're all tired and bored and sick of, uh, yeah, you know, PowerPoint presentations. So therefore, I thought we could keep this, if we could keep this more interactive, if we could keep this more um, engaging in tone, I think that would be more appropriate. Because rather than uh, just hear what I would say, I think what would make it really interesting is uh, to have a, a dialogue sort of a thing, I think. So just quickly, uh, to give you an introduction of sorts, we all know that um, we went through a, a transition recently. Up until 2nd of June, we were in a state called Andhra Pradesh, and today we are in a state called Telangana. That's the political reality. But then I keep telling a lot of people that um, neither, are we, uh, neither are we in the state of Andhra Pradesh, nor are we in a state of Telangana now. We're in fact in a state of flux. A lot of people are a little confused. A lot of people are actually a little worried you know, as to what it is that is likely to happen to our Hyderabad, what it is that is likely to happen to our uh, good old state. So a couple of things to begin with. We in India, unfortunately, do not have a scientific rationale for the formation of new states. We all know that. On the one hand, we have something as small as Goa as a state. Goa is a city we all uh, love. Goa is a state we all love. And on the other hand, we have something as big as Uttar Pradesh, which is the sixth largest administrative unit in the world, not the country, but the world, as a state as well in our own country. So there's never really been a scientific rationale for the formation of a new state in India. Having said that, it has always been, uh, it has always been a convenient uh, it, is, it has always been the uh, uh, convenience of the party in power in Delhi. Whenever it suited them, they have gone about doing things their own, their own, uh, to their own liking, to their own uh, advantage. In fact, while the Telangana movement goes back five decades, the fact remains that in the last decade and a half, uh, more so in the last decade really, there has been a, a great degree of uh, pressure that was built up by primarily Telangana Rashtra Samiti and a lot of other organizations as well. And ultimately, the cookie crumbled. In Delhi, the two political formations, both NDA and the UPA, both of them have agreed in principle uh, on the formation of Telangana. And eventually, in the country where we have uh, coalition politics ruling the roost for the last, um, I think, 15, 20 years now, and uh, in, the, in the foreseeable future as well, now that it had to happen at some point, and it has. Now, I appeal to one and all uh, in the room, because I'm sure uh, most of you have uh, very strong opinions on this subject about bifurcation, whether it should have happened or it should not have happened, and if it had happened, how it, could, it should have been done, how it should have been handled, etc. I request you all to look at it this way. See, when a family grows, I'm sure uh, most of you are married, at least some of you are married. Um, when, when you get married, the family size obviously increases. When you move to a new house, um, then the family grows, you have children, you start reorganizing the same room, same, same house that is. You add another room, you know, you reorganize. Then you have another kid, you, you, you reorganize some more. So it's essentially like that. I mean, if you look at it with cold logic, leaving aside the emotional aspect of it, I think it's very, very simple and straightforward. We as a country have reorganized. Merely what has happened in the formation of a new state is merely reorganization, nothing more to it really. Leave alone the emotional aspect and uh, the, the background or the baggage that goes with it. It's mere reorganization of a state. A lot of people wanted us to believe that, um, you know, catastrophic uh, uh, consequences would emerge out of the formation of Telangana. But I ask you all, I ask you all to introspect, I ask you all to think. It's been over five months now since the bill has been passed. The bill with regard to um, Andhra Pradesh reorganization was passed on the 18th of February. Today is the 23rd of July. So it's, I think, more than five months now. 
Can anybody point out to anything that went out, I mean, that was completely out of the ordinary, that was completely abnormal, catastrophic, and all the, all the rumors we had heard in the past. Has anything happened which makes you believe that this was something that was not in the interest of the nation? I'm not too sure, because I've, I've heard a lot of people say this. I've heard a lot of people ask this question as well in the past and even some right now as well, as to whether this is in the interest of the nation, as to whether this is in the interest of our state, etc. But end of the day, in a democracy, I think what has to prevail is the people's opinion, and that's exactly what has happened. Today, the people of Telangana have demanded, have agitated for a separate state, which is very much within the purview of the Indian constitution. And therefore, whatever has happened at the end of the day, the decision has been taken, the, the dice has been cast, the elections have happened, bill has been passed. And now for all of us now, it is time to move on because the two new states are a reality. We have two new states now, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. We have two chief ministers, we have two new governments functioning very well, I must say. So therefore, all in all, at the end of the day, I think it's a reality and time for all, all of us to move on. Having said that, now what is the way forward? What is it that uh, uh, Telangana government is looking at? What is, what is it that the Telangana government is focusing on? We all know from the very beginning, um, in, in, from the formation of Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, the city of Hyderabad, has been the primary economic engine that drove the growth, that fueled the growth of uh, the state of Andhra Pradesh, the state of United Andhra Pradesh. Even today, the Telangana government is of the firm belief that it is Hyderabad, at least in the near foreseeable future, if not, uh, if not uh, in the long term, but in the foreseeable future, it is the city of Hyderabad which shall be the growth engine for the state of Telangana as well. And therefore, we are very, very clear in our minds. Our chief minister is a man who is uh, uh, known for his strong opinions and strong positions. He is somebody who is very, very decisive. In fact, I, I kept uh, telling a lot of people off late as well, those who have met, uh, those who are from outside of the state, those who are from outside of Hyderabad, I've been repeatedly telling them that what we had lacked in the last four or five years is what we have today. In the last four or five years, yes, there has been definitely a certain sense of slowdown. Yes, there has been certain slowdown in uh, economic expansion, be it information technology, be it other sectors of economy. There has certainly been a sense of uh, slowdown. And what has happened, what, what, is, what has been uh, the cause of that? I, I, I attribute it to three different things. One, political stability. Yes, part of the issue is because uh, the agitation of Telangana was at its peak in the last five years, and therefore, with governments in Delhi and Hyderabad taking their own sweet time in taking uh, decisions, them procrastinating forever, which have never, when, when, where they could not even uh, make up their mind whether or not to bifurcate, I think that has definitely led to some sense of, uh, some sense of a despair among uh, the business community here. That's the one thing, the political instability that there was in the last five years. The second thing, obviously, is decisive leadership. In today's world, we need leaders who are agile, who are quick, who are receptive to change, who are receptive to uh, the environment that they are in, who are dynamic enough to take a decision without consulting some big bosses in Delhi where decisions only get made 10, 15, 20 days from when a decision should have been made. Today, in today's world, I think agility is a big thing and decisive leadership matters. We all understand, especially in the business world, where we are competing with uh, um, people across the globe, really. I think it's very, very important for the governments to be agile and decisive. And that's exactly what we did not have in the last five years. And the third thing, obviously, the global economic slowdown, which also hurt us like uh, many other countries, many other emerging nations.